Thank you, Alan. You should be able to find either in your bulletin or on the screen the call to worship. Um, actually, we're going to start with a little prayer here. Oh, holy God, we would like to gather and focus on worship. So give us breath, patience, laughter. Let us come into your presence and be with you and hear what you have to tell us, even if it's to laugh at ourselves and not take everything so seriously. Let us turn now to the call to worship. For Yahweh does not see as mortals see. But Yahweh looks on the heart. That one's a short one, right? Yay. That comes from 1 Samuel. Now, if you would rise, if you're here in the sanctuary, Otherwise, you will find the words to be thou my vision on the screen. Now we turn to prayers, and this truly is the heart of our service, whether anything else happens. If we can gather in prayer, this is where we hear each other and we lift up what we ask God to hear and hold for us. We begin with prayers of concern, and I'm going to give you the list of those about whom we know, and then I will ask that you add your prayers to those that we are, have already named. We begin with Kevin, who is a member of our church and who this week hit a really tough spot with his mental health and was hearing voices that were telling him to hurt himself. <clears throat> and he was trying to escape them. He jumped through the window of a motel and got cut up. He's in intensive care. Um, but he's okay. He calls me four times a day, and he's eating and complaining about the food. So in point of fact, they, they're trying to regulate a few parts of his body because part of what happened is that he took too many of his medications um, when he was listening to the voices, and they're pretty toxic in the wrong proportions. Once he's out of intensive care, he'll probably go to a psychiatric facility. And this is all actually a really important and a good step for him because um, his mental health is not letting him take care of himself the best way he could right now. And we've been struggling for quite a while to have better care and better wraparounds for him. And I think now that unfortunately he's actually hurt himself, that may happen. So for Kevin, and for those for whom Kevin wears the face for us and reminds us that there are people living among us who live all the time with mental health conditions. And some of them are really well managed and we would never even guess that people are living with a depression, anxiety, um, different kinds of mental health conditions. And sometimes, especially in times of trauma with COVID, people are overwhelmed. And we're seeing more of that happening now. So even those who provide care 
for our vulnerable community living with mental health conditions are feeling overwhelmed too. So for all those who need light in their minds and their bodies, stability, we pray. We are praying also this week for names that we've been upholding for a while. Huntley, as he continues his recovery following his open heart surgery, Doc Gilmore has been a great um, guide to him because Doc went through a, a really big surgery himself and Cindy, you know, was right there with them. And uh, Doc was able to give Huntley advice. So we are grateful for those who walk a tough road and then can look back at it and learn from it and become a companion of encouragement to others. We are thinking of Scamp as she's recovering from her final chemo and will come upon her diagnostics not so far away. We think of others also living actively with cancer. We think of Richard and his lovely wife, Sandra, who is here with us this morning. We think of Judy, um, of Judy and Bill who lives with a chronic condition. Claire, same thing. Others who are in recovery from cancer diagnoses. We think of Sasha, who always has challenges, but is a beacon of hope to all of us. Uh, Nancy Davis, much the same thing, coming to her next round of chemo, and um, always positive. We think of Sasha's granddaughter, Mary, and her heart. We always pray for Mary's heart. We pray for John Pepper. We pray for Alice and John's son, Brian, as he continues to live with ALS and come into the home stretch of his journey here on earth. We think of Barry and Jan. We think indeed of the Corrigans who are saying goodbye this week. We think also of the poor Fs who had a private memorial service to remember both of their parents last Sunday here. And now, having named all these names, are there other prayers of concern that anybody, we'll, we'll start in Zoom and Cheryl has a microphone for here in the sanctuary. Does anybody in Zoom have a prayer of concern that you'd like to name out loud? So please unmute. I know that Jeanette asked us to pray for Robert Sear, who is her neighbor. And so we will add Robert to our active prayers as a community this week. I think we're good in Zoom. Okay, yeah. So if anybody in the sanctuary has a prayer, please go ahead and let us know so that we can pass you the microphone. Maybe my list was entirely exhaustive and nobody has anything else to add. All right. Well, I'm going to say that let us then turn towards prayers of celebration and hope, and that's a good thing that we can turn in that direction. Let us first, of course, name the fact that we have ongoing challenges with COVID. The Delta variant is affecting some parts of the world incredibly badly, as is the original strain of COVID. And for places here in the U.S., it continues to be a challenge. So let us not take for granted that life has returned to normal because we are still in the middle of knowing what it means to live through a pandemic. It's not gone. Celebration. You guys are really quiet. I, I, go ahead, Meg. Go for it. Hold on. <laughs> um, I, I'm not sure if my sister Kate is here via Zoom today. She is. Uh, oh, good. Um, she's... I know she's very happy because her son David has flown in from Washington DC to Seattle. So she has both her sons and her daughter-in-law with her and she's gonna celebrate her birthday tomorrow. So happy birthday, Kate. Congratulations on a wonderful uh, gathering, Kate, and a happy birthday to you. We have another prayer coming here in the sanctuary. What we'll mention as celebration also that Autumn Varian is turning 15 today. So if if you're a teenager, 15 is a great number to turn because it's one step closer to driving among other things, right? And here's Sue with a prayer of celebration and gratitude. First, we'd like to celebrate 
a birthday tomorrow for Jean. She's going to be um, 60, 89 years young. 89, Jean is gonna be 89, wow. <laughs> and also I just wanna say, what a time of year to celebrate the loving chaos of having our families come from all over the world. <laughs> and I think of Sasha and her chaotic family. Mm -hmm. And I think of Arden and Meg, you and uh, Wendy with your family. So <laughs> it's just wonderful to hear about all the lovely chaos. And let's celebrate that. And your family has just um, left, or left you, right? So you've had your chaotic family here as well. We have another prayer from Ginger. Um, just, we're so grateful to be in this beautiful town. Um, we had the Jackson Bridge dance yesterday and all the people that came out and it's just wonderful to see people after years of not being able to kind of give a hug. Mm. Mm. So grateful for our, our little village. <laughs> I, and again, I think the fact that we have the shadow of Delta variant with us makes every gathering precious. Um, so we, we appreciate them all the more. Any other prayers of gratitude or celebration here in the sanctuary? Then in Zoom, does anybody have a prayer of celebration or gratitude that you'd like to unmute and share with us? Go ahead, Kit. Um, you're muted. There we go. We heard that our grandson um, tested positive for COVID um, last week, and he has been just a dripping nose, and we're grateful that's all he's had. <laughs> it was a scary phone call we got. I, yeah, I bet. Um, again, you know, not to take for granted our well-being in the middle of all of this. We still have children and young people that haven't been uh, vaccinated and we know that even if you have had the vaccination you can still contract it and pass it to others so we're, we're not immune and so for everybody living with it and for those that are living with the remembrance of it uh, we're grateful though that your grandson is well yeah thank you jennifer did you want to say something yeah. Um, we dedicated the second bench in my dad's honor at the Beaver Creek Wetlands and about five to six people from the wetlands came out to join us. And it was just, even though it was hot and humid and there were a lot of mosquitoes, we made it through and it was just a beautiful ceremony. And I'm just glad we got it done. Thank you. And I, you know, again, these some of these are bittersweet acknowledgments that for Sandy and for Jennifer, they're remembering their father with these memorials. Um, it is a season of memorials. Some people have literally died just recently, but many people had to defer milestones such as a memorial. And so I, along with many of my colleagues are doing at least one memorial a week at a minimum. And so people are really there. They need, we need the ritual and the sacraments of remembering those that we love and honoring them. And we are grateful that right now we can do that too. Are there prayers of celebration in Zoom? Please join me in prayer. Oh, holy God. You have heard the names that we lift up, the people that we lift up, the loved ones that we lift up. We lift up to the places in the world, the places to which we are particularly connected, like the Chikanga Church in the city of Mutare in the nation of Zimbabwe, like the towns in Honduras, the places where our children and our grandchildren are rooted where our families are far flung and call different places home. And by these relationships, this web of connection, we are knitted together. And some of those places continue to be at risk. They are burning, they are flooding. 
the clouds come across the nation to change the horizon here so that our sun looks different than it did on other days. We are reminded that what happens in one part of the world is happening to and for all of us. And as we must see God in each other, we must see our accountability to your creation in the way the world is hurting and in need of healing even now. Not just our bodies, but our entire earth becomes the body of Christ. And as we say, your body broken open and renewed so that love would flow out and come down through generations is now our body. And each one of us is part of your body, part of your community, part of your kingdom. May you hear us as we cry out and as we celebrate and as we sing. And oh God, please help us to hear our brothers and our sisters and the parts of the world in which they live that too need your love and attention embodied in how we live and love in this world. And God, before we speak together in prayer, we offer you first our silence. And now, God, as our voices are gathered up and lifted up to you, we ask that those who are in Zoom with us would unmute so that we can hear all of our voices together and pray as we were first taught, saying, Our Father, who art Lord, in heaven, Lord, hallowed Lord, be Lord, thy name. Thy Lord, kingdom Lord, come, Lord, thy will be done on, on earth, earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Our daily bread. And forgive, and forgive us, us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Sue's going to come up and read the scripture. You guys in Zoom don't know, because you don't see like the playlist, but these guys all had a program. You probably knew I was out of order, right? Uh, I'm, I'm in whatever order it's supposed to go in today. So Sue's going to read the scripture for us. Um, you know what? I'm going to have, I'm going to give you, um, they can't hear you otherwise. Good morning. This is a scripture according to Matthew chapter five and seven. Um, Matthew chapter five, one and two, and chapter seven, one through five. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them by saying, do not judge so that you may not be judged. For with the judgment you make, you will be judged and the measure you give will be the measure you get. Why do you see the speck in your neighbor's eye, but do not notice the log in your own eye? Or how can you say to your neighbor, let me take the speck out of your eye while the log is in your own eye. You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your own neighbor's eye. So ends the reading. Replacing the microphone, everybody, and then I'm going to ask that you pray with me. Oh, holy God, may the words of my mouth 
and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Okay, so remember that we are this month thinking about self-care, and we are thinking about the ways that Christ used humor as part of self-care. This text is taken from quite a long chapter that focuses, well, multiple chapters that focus on the Sermon on the Mount. And some of the greatest lessons that Jesus gave to us come from that text. Today, we focus on one that is actually intended to be humorous, but in its humor, by throwing up this startling image, it's intended to cause us to pause, chuckle, and then think. Usually on a Friday night, I pull together artwork for our C3 conversations. We're going to take a break from them through August because most people are having family in and out of town or they're traveling. But I did actually pull together the artwork for this scripture this, this past week. And the interesting thing about most of the art that was created for it was that in the 14th, 15th, 16th century, this image and others like it were used to create teaching moments. So there are all these almost cartoon-like images that were printed on printing presses and distributed to people as lessons in what it meant to be a good Christian. And then by the 20th century and the 21st century, this same image of a log in your eye and a speck or a splinter in someone else's eye, imagine the scale of this, had been turned into theological cartoons that were being used as clip art in church newsletters all over the place. And sometimes the same artist would revisit this particular story and do three or four different plays on it over the years. This humor translates fairly easily into comic strips and into a fairly straightforward reflection on being self-aware. It's pretty silly for us to point the finger at someone else when we need to be aware of what is happening in our own lives and critique ourselves first before we're busy talking about other people. And I have to say, how many of you ever heard when you were trying to shoot things as a kid, you're going to shoot your eye out? Raise your hand if you heard that sometime in your life. I certainly did. It's the famous line in lots of movies. And I actually worked as a lifeguard with one guy who shot his own eye out. You know, some people actually live the lesson. It's not a great thing, but he used a BB gun, aimed at something, it ricocheted, it hit his eye. And by the time I knew him, he had a fake eye and he used to take it out and scare the kids at the pool and tell them that a shark had taken his eyeball out and stuff like that. So he made the most of it. You know, when you're a teenager, you do these kind of things. So there is that sense of humor even, yeah, with mom's warnings and good, good wisdom. Please don't shoot at things that might take your eye out. But this is not about the physical body. This story, this wisdom is about our inner vision, our inner voice, and our awareness of self. Anytime you find yourself turning your eyes or your finger or your voice towards someone else and saying, I wish they would dot, 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 you know, fill in the blank, whatever pisses you off, makes you upset, and you're critiquing somebody else, that's usually when it would be a great time to take a very deep breath and realize that if something is bothering you, it is likely a stumbling block in your own life. And you may want to think about your own relationship to the circumstance, whether it's personal or systemic, that got you so bothered and hot and irritable anyway. 
I say this with an acknowledgement that we are often our own worst critics. Sometimes you don't have to say something to anybody else because their own inner voice, the it editor that is always right there willing to jump in and say, you know, you really should do it this way. You're not up to snuff. You're not perfect enough. You know, you got this all wrong. Oh. Does all the work for us. We don't need somebody else to criticize us because we are already critical of ourselves too often. And usually about the time that you're telling other people that they're too hard on themselves, that's also a wisdom that you should be turning on yourself and saying, you yourself deserve the same type of compassion and patience as you would give to others. It's simply the caution in both ways, not to be too overly critical of yourself, but to at the same time, take inventory and be honest with yourself. If you're willing to turn your finger or your voice or your eyes towards someone else in a critical way, just know where you stand in relation to that situation and perhaps offer some compassion both to yourself as well as to the one that you might criticize. Somebody from the eight o'clock mentioned that the great example of this is when we're on the road and we're criticizing other people's driving, of which I am often guilty. I get impatient when other people are doing something ahead of me, like they're either going too slow or they're going too fast and scaring me, either one and any extreme. And then I think, okay, Right now is a great time again. Take a deep breath. Take your time. You'll get there when you get there. We can't be responsible for other people's behavior. The only person we can change is ourselves. But let us be compassionate with ourselves and learn the lesson of taking a breath, letting it go if we're not in charge of it, and looking inward first. With that same awareness, let me offer you this final thought about what it means to take the log out of your own eye before you try to look at or respond to the splinter in someone else's. This week, we remember Martha Chandler, the mother of Ellen Chandler, who is the director of Jackson Cross Country Ski Touring Foundation. Martha lived a venerable life. And if you were in Friday sliders or gliders, she was one of us. Um, and often she couldn't even really see the tracks, but she would get out there even this past year and she would ski on the flats in the good parts of the tracks. And she just kept going. And she was in her 90s doing this. And so I think of myself and my own fears. Sometimes the thing that gets stuck in my eye is the criticism or the fear that just has me stopped. And I'm so busy like being frozen or looking at everybody else and judging that they're so much better than me. I, I don't even know if I should be out here that that becomes the log in my eye. And sometimes it's when I pause and I think about three of the women who have made a difference for me to have the courage to enjoy cross-country skiing. And I start with Betsy Harding a few years ago. The first piece of advice that she gave me was smile. Because when you smile, you relax all of your muscles and you're not as uptight, you're not as clenched up, and you'll do better. And then up at Prospect Farms, on that first hill that gets you up to the top of Prospect Farms, I was afraid to go down it. I was really afraid to go down any kind of hill on my cross country skis. But guess who was at the top of the hill? One of the times that the log in my eye, the fear that was stopping me, my own worst critic, Sarah Kimball was up there. And if you're from Jackson, you know Sarah Kimball. She skis in a, 
I don't, it's an adaptive cross country ski. It's a sit ski. She can't walk without braces. She's largely in a wheelchair, but she, she bikes, she skis. Nothing stops this woman. And she was a standing up skier for a lot of her life. So she knows perfectly well how to do it. And she coached generations of people, her own children included, I'm sure, about how to ski well. And so there was Sarah Kimball sitting in her sit ski next to me at the top of the hill. And from her sit ski, where she can't use her legs in the same way anymore, she was coaching me, hey, you know, bend your knees in a little bit and then bow out and just, you know, crouch down, put your center your weight. And, and I was remembering Betsy saying, smile, Gail, smile and relax everything. And then there's Sarah Kimball telling me to, to, you know, how, how to get in the right position and maintain my balance. And I went down the hill. And I've never been able to be as afraid on a hill ever since because I can hear right now Sarah Kimball's voice in my head and Betsy's voice in my head. And then last year, the last two years of Friday sliders and gliders, I got to have the privilege of skiing with Martha who was out there and couldn't see the tracks. But she skied because there were parallel tracks in the snow and she loved to move and she wouldn't give it up. How can I let the log stay in my eye? How can I let the obstacle remain in my life when I have these voices who have helped me remove it? Skiing is a joy for me. I'm so fortunate to have found it. I'm not going to be a competitive Olympic skier. I don't claim that. I'm just saying I love it. And sometimes we have to change things we love and find new things. I told you last week, Brian, living with ALS, who tells us that he is dying, took up the passion of bird song and bird watching because he could do that. He can do it from his wheelchair. He can hear the songs and tell me what birds are singing. He's still teaching me. Don't spend too much time criticizing or looking outward at others, but also don't let the critical voice stop you. Let the wisdom of those around you and their compassion, which is what we've been asked to show, the non-judgment, the openness to say, you can do it. Smile, relax, bend your legs. Just get out there on the flats if that's what you can do. Move your body. However you are able to be in the world, be in the world. And know that you have something of value to share with others and that it is the voice of compassion, the voice of love, not the voice of judgment for yourself or any other. That is the holy voice that has been released into the world. And with humor and love, that voice, if you listen for it, and that voice, if you offer it, will make things possible that you thought were impossible will remove the logs and the beams and let you tend to yourself and others and experience what this world and this life, this heaven on earth has to offer for us. Brothers and sisters, smile, relax, bend your knees and give it a try. Thanks be to God. We turn now to a time of offering. If you're here in the sanctuary, there's a basket in the back. There are plates in the front. There are envelopes in the pew if you are physically giving today. There's a way to give online, jxncc.org. Many of you have given in advance. And for all the different ways that you make this commitment and help us remain healthy in these times so that we too may respond to others, we give you thanks.
Know too that when you make these offerings, you're not making them to this church. This is a commitment that we make as part of our pledge as people of faith to our God, that the work of our God may happen in this world. Now, if I've got everything in the right order, we're turning to a hymn. Am I right? Okay, you're, if you're in the sanctuary, feel free to rise if you're able. It will be page 529 in the red hymnal. We're going to take our best stab at this. I know that there's not a musical score here for the folks that are looking at the words from Zoom, but we're just going to do our best. And it's one verse. Enjoy the benediction together so you can remain standing if you're able. Well, brothers and sisters, go in peace. This was an exciting morning, and you all did very well getting through it and coaching me through it, too. Thank you. Go in peace, stay cool, and be well. Mm -hmm.